I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our fibre video tutorials. In this particular tutorial we're just going to talk about uh, removing contamination. Just a, a cursory look at removing contamination and then when we do get into stop prep and approach flow we'll do the, the sort of mechanisms in more detail. So this is really an overview of removing contamination. Well, if you want to remove contamination, then you really need to know what contamination you've got and how much. So whatever you use for removing contamination, whatever equipment you specify, depends on the size of the contamination, because it could be anything from a car engine to an ink particle or a grain of sand or a coin. It depends on the type of contamination. Is it something rigid like a lump, a piece of metal, a staple, a wire? Is it very flexible like a, a sheet of plastic? Is it a waxy material that will easily deform or even melt? So all these things need to be considered. And how much is there? Is it just one or two percent of your stock or is it 50 percent? And finally, it depends what product you're making that this contaminated material goes into. Is it going to be something that will need to be bleached? Is it going to be a white paper, for example, newsprint? Is it going to be tissue? Is it going to be brown packaging paper where you don't need to de-ink? Anyway, let's move on and have a look. So, as I mentioned in earlier videos, there are five major categories of recycled fibre. And we call them these days Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, Group 4, Group 5. Group 1 has the least contamination. Group 2 has a little more contamination. Group 3 has even more contamination. Group 4 is used for craft grades and Group 5, the so-called special grades. Those are the ones where it's really difficult to get any useful fibre out at all. Something like uh, liquid packaging board, for example, or wax impregnated papers. Anyway, within each of those five groups, there are 10 or more subgroups making more than 50 different grades of recycled fibre that it's possible to purchase. The lowest grades are called mixed grades. And with mixed grades, you could have as little as 50% fibre there. The other materials could be plastic, glass, lots of things. And with that sort of material, or also high levels of wet paper with high levels of wet strength in, so for that sort of contamination, you really need the most aggressive system possible. And that would be the Raga Junker system. It's called the Raga Junker because here we have what we call the Junker. This thing will collect small, heavy metal objects, dense objects. This here is what we call the Raga. It's a rope that's thrown in. And the way this works is that you throw into this low consistency hydropulper the bale of waste, including the wires. And uh, one of the things I've shown you here is uh, a little QR code. If you freeze this video and scan that QR code with your smartphone, it will take you to another video on my website where you can actually see this ragged junker in action. Anyway, back to the story. We throw in here bales of waste, including the wires. As it spins so fast, the wires will get entangled around this rope and it will grow in length. So continually, the operator is having to very slowly pull it out. It doesn't want to be too long or it'll get caught in the rotor. It doesn't want to be too short or the new wires won't wrap around it. So it's a skill managing that rope. 
And the idea of that is very often a lot of the contamination can be flexible plastic packaging, for example, magazines in plastic wrappers. So the idea of this is when that magazine hits this rotor, the plastic bag gets torn open, the magazine comes out, the papers get shredded. That plastic, before it gets chance to be shredded, will get entangled with the wires and therefore it will get pulled out. So with high levels of contamination, we're not waiting till further in the process to start removing contamination. From the very moment you even dis start to disperse the fibres, you are trying to remove contamination. So the ragger will pull out the wires and it will pull out any flexible plastic packaging that has become entangled with the wires. Remaining in here will be small pieces of heavy contaminants, stones, bricks, um, metal objects. And there will be useful fibre. And there will be small bits of flexible pl or plastic or, or even rigid plastic contamination. So underneath the rotor is a perforation. So the useful fibre will go through that perforation. That's the accepts line and off for further cleaning. All the heavy metal objects and the uh, floating plastic contamination will come this way into this so-called junker mat or junker here. The heavy metal objects will settle to the, or stone objects. The heavy objects will settle to the bottom and regularly an operator will open up a little door and clear it out and move it. The smaller pieces of floating around contamination, mainly plastic type material, that will still be floating around. That will then come up here. It will be put into a drum screen. The drum screen will catch most of the large plastic material. That will then go off to a skip or be rejected, a reject line. And because it's a perforated screen, all the remaining useful fibre will come back in here and go, hopefully, through the accepts line. If not, back around the system until it eventually does go through the accepts line. So, have a you know, scan this with you with your smartphone. Have a watch of the video. Okay, let's move on now. That type of, uh, that previous type of ragger junker system is really, is often used for things like uh, waste material that's destined to become corrugated packaging. Waste material that's going to become newsprint often comes through a, a different sort of system, something like this. So this is what we call a drum pulper. It's on a very slight angle, just two, three, four degrees going down. We bring in bales of waste that have been collected with their wires removed. Now this is a far more gentle system, much more gentle than the other system. So gentle that you have to be careful what you put in it because if you have certain contamination it will just come out of the other end unscathed. So it's better not to buy that. So these people who use this will pay a lot more for their waste, but it's a lot less contaminated and the contamination is um, suitable for this sort of equipment. And most of the, most of the um, raw material that goes in here will actually be old newspapers for making new newspapers also some magazines. So the bale of recycled fibre minus the wires will come up here, drop into this first zone that's said to be a high consistency zone. There we have, or within here, we have showers, either water showers or alkali showers. And 
inside these walls there are also some baffles and the baffles will pick up these magazines and newspapers and just drop them just pick them up and drop them and that's the only work that's put into them very very little work as it works its way down towards the end of this first zone a lot of that paper will be reduced into individual fibers it'll then enter the second zone and in this second zone this drum is perforated and here we have a lot more needle showers producing a lot more water trying to flush everything through so all the fibers will go through here into a collecting vessel and then be pumped away for the next operation any anything that didn't get reduced to individual fibers will fall out of the end and go into a skip and be taken away so you can understand why you've got to be really selective if you if you choose a magazine that's got something stuck on the front of its cover like a child's toy or a, some cosmetics or a, a cd it will come out of here intact unscathed if you put in here the sort of magazines we get in the other system in a plastic envelope they will come out of here still in the plastic envelope if you put in here a piece of blue paper towel that you used to drying your hands on that piece of blue paper towel will come out of this end as well so you have to be really selective in what you choose to put in this particular style of pulper <clears throat> once they've uh, been through the pulper then you need to start to remove other contamination and an early strategy is to remove things that are a different size than a fiber so for that you might use uh, a pressure screen as we've got here or you might use a vibrating screen or again we'll talk about vibrating screens later in another section but screens remove things that are a different size than a fiber so in some screens you'll have a small gap the fiber will get through anything bigger than a fiber will get caught on the outside and go down a different stream as you can see here so fiber and contamination in the fibers will pass through the screen and come out here material gets caught on the outside of the screen will come out here once you've done that you could put it through another screen where the opposite will happen the you have a finer screen fibers will get caught on the outside of the screen and small contamination things even smaller than a fiber will pass through so accepts will not be contamination free accepts will contain contamination that's round about the same size as a fiber and that means we need another strategy a sieve doesn't work because a sieve only works off size so we then use what we call a centrifugal cleaner or some people will call it a hydrocyclone others will call it just a cyclone the idea now is that you separate the good from the bad the fiber from the contamination by virtue of their density so you bring in the stock and its contamination along here it comes as a tangent to this tube it spins it round and round and round the fast as this gets tapered the uh, rotational speed increases the more dense material will get thrown to the outside it'll hit the wall slide down and fall out to the bottom because of the way that these things are set up you will be creating a vortex and this dilution water coming here will direct the vortex up to the top and the accepts will come out so generally the rejects are consist of contamination that's more dense than a fiber and the fibers come out of the top 
there are some of these or again we'll see them later that do it the opposite way around sometimes your contamination might be polystyrene and polystyrene is much lighter than a fiber so once you've put it through one set of cleaners to remove material that's more dense than a fiber you're left with fiber and material that's less dense so you put it through another set of cleaners and this time the fiber comes out of the bottom and the contamination will come out of the top polystyrene because it's much less dense than a fiber and finally uh, you've got materials that are much tinier than anything we've talked about so far and these are ink particles and in order to get rid of ink particles you would use something like a, a de-inking cell so i'm just mentioning it here but we'll talk about it in more detail later on in the system so thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it uh, please feel free to comment as always and we look forward to seeing you in future videos